around the city of Philadelphia, everything from, thank you very much for doing that. I always forget that part. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we do a series of workshops on many different topics, including legal topics. We will be doing something on trademarks tomorrow uh, and how to do a trademark search. And we will have a lawyer in doing that presentation for us. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we do a peer learning program. And our peer learning program is a 12 week program for small business owners. It is on Wednesday night from six to 9 PM. Our next uh, peer learning program will start in September. Uh, the program is basically runs like this. It covers pretty much the soup to nuts for your whole business. So everything from your marketing, your finance, your growth strategies, uh, to your uh, business model uh, and a whole lot more. Uh, hold on a second here. Let me just move this out of the way. Uh, during that class, you work on what we call a tactical improvement plan or a growth strategy for your business. Uh, the growth strategy is designed to help you build and grow your business. Uh, with that growth strategy, you develop three goals uh, within your business, and then you work on tactics along with timeframes and uh, along that to accomplish your goal. Um, during the time period of the classes, uh, you will work with instructors who are specially selected for their uh, abilities to help small business owners. In addition to that, with your goal setting uh, and your tactics, those will be determined and helped. Uh, helping you uh, will be a business coach. The business coach will work one-on-one -on -one with you outside the class, for giving you 10 hours of total help uh, to accomplish your goals and set your tactics. In addition to that, there will be two hours of financial coaching, which is provide, provided directly. And they're helping enforce your employee provided hand. Provided directly for everyone's business. Uh, we ask everybody to please mute if you can, please, um, too, as we go through this. That's another one of our rules. Uh, it's very difficult for people to understand if people are talking while you're on. I will be monitoring and uh, trying to mute people as we move forward. Uh, I'm now going to turn it over to Christian, who is one of the fine people at the revenue department that helps us along uh, to understand city business taxes and how they operate. Once again, I want to thank everyone for coming today. This is being recorded, so you will get a copy of this. And uh, after this, you will also get a copy of the slides. I will be sending those out along with a survey to let you know uh, for, I'm sorry, for you to let us know uh, what you think about the program. So I'm now going to turn it over to Christian and we'll get started with the program. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you. And thank you to everyone for joining, making it on a Wednesday, 1 p.m. when the weather has been so now outside uh, to talk to talk a not necessarily so fun topic, uh, but a very important one. If you're here, that means that you have interested that you probably have questions. So we hope that what we're going to discuss today is you leave you live here at least with an idea. Um, I'm being joined or today with me is a, a, a group of folks that are actually the the main uh, the main protagonists of all this, speci specifically our tech our tech advisors in, in within revenue. So we have Rachelle uh, with us and she will be covering most of the heavy discussions about taxes. Um, and we're going to try to do it in a concise, plain language way or something that it's just easier for for people like you who are probably not immersed or talking this terminology every day, uh, even like we do. And I'll say, we have been, uh, for some of us, discussing taxes for a while. I've been doing it for almost two, two years. I'm sure that the, the tech team here has been doing it for longer. That don't, does, does, that does not make us an expert on either topic. So very, very very good discussions are about to happen. Um, like Christopher said, my name is Christian Crespo. I'm the communications and outreach manager. Uh, we also have Rahul, uh, part of the tech team as well. And we also have Joy McCoy, a great contact if you want to invite us for something similar. If you have planned uh, something alone, you know, you have other business partners or co community partners, uh, friends, neighbors, uh, a business quarter. If you're part of a similar organization, 
or even another uh, similar presentation, Joy is your contact. Write out down her name. Uh, she can probably share your her email on the chat later. Uh, but if you're you're interested in inviting revenue for an, any similar presentation or discussions or tabling, um, we can do that. And we have the capacity. We have a team of individuals. Uh, that range from across different units or divisions within revenue, uh, and they can do it on weekdays, um, weekends, nights, etc. So feel free to reach out and invite us to any any similar event. Um, real quick, let's go. Let's start with some disclaimers before we we can we move forward. Um, first of all, this is a presentation that we only cover Philadelphia taxes. Uh, so there might be some topics that we leave, leave out intentionally because we're not in relation to anything that has to do with the state or federal taxes like the, the Pennsylvania sales tax or personal income tax. Any of those we're not going to discuss. Uh, we're here on representations of the Philadelphia Revenue Department, and that means we're only going to talk city or local taxes, right? Um, good recommendation for everyone, uh, again, as a starting point. You always consult and hire a tax professional advice. It's not easy to manage or or work with taxes, specifically in Philadelphia, can be a, a little bit complicated. That's how laws are made. Um, but it is best that you hire a professional all the time to do any business. And you can connect with resources like the Community College of Philadelphia. And, and also we talk about the free library uh, and the brick a little bit uh, down at the end, but those are free resources out there that can help you connect with additional like tax professional um, outside of revenue. All right. Like I was saying, this is just a presentation to understand the requirements that you may need to start a business. I don't know, um, maybe just, let's just start by getting the chat a little bit uh, in, in in motion and give some, some action in the chat. So leave in the chat if you're already a business owner, if you're thinking to start a business, if you're doing it for a while, if you're doing it inside of Philadelphia only, or you're expanding your business outside of, Phil outside of Philadelphia uh, boundaries. And we just wanna like read through that uh, on the comments. So drop in the chat. Uh, what it's kind of like your business structure, what you're doing and how long you've been doing it, or you're just thinking about it. Uh, and that will also help us during the presentation to know what type of audience we have. But first of all, let's talk about what you may need as kind of like one, two, three steps. So the first thing you want to do if you're thinking about starting a business is opening or requesting a fitting number or Philadelphia tax identification number. Um, we will drop some resources in the chat but it's pretty easy to do it now with the Philadelphia Tax Center. This is our website. It's an online mobile enabled, tablet enabled. You can access from anywhere um, uh, this website. And by signing up for the website as a first time user or as a new user, you will also be opening a Philadelphia tax identification number. Uh, so you follow those steps, you can open your fitting number, which is what you're gonna need to get a commercial activity license or a call. Um, I believe this is, you do this or you open a call through the license and inspection system or Eclipse. When you're going to their system, you're gonna need the fee team. So again, as a first step, go into the Philadelphia Tax Center and request or sign up for a fee team number. And then you're gonna go and request on a commercial activity license. The second step for opening a business is going to be selecting what type of accounts you're going to need. And that is something we're going to cover in a, in a few minutes. But it's, it, it is essential that you know what type of business you're opening or you're running, operating in the city of Philadelphia. Um, this is another instance where we'll say, seek, I would say, professional advice from either a tax, a tax professional or from a business uh counsel or a legal counsel who can tell you what is the type of structure that your business must follow depending on what you you know are trying to run or operate locally um like i said you can register as a new taxpayer in the philadelphia tax center that's the website tax-services.fila.gov um you could use that website and you go directly to the tax center if you cannot apply online, you can open a fitting number anytime using a paper, a paper application. 
And all forms and applications for revenue are available on our website. It is pretty accessible. However, if you do encounter any issues or if you need any more accommodations, this is worth mentioning. We do accommodate language accessibility. So if English is not your first language and you would like to, to receive a form, a document, or an application in a different language other than English, you can let us know. We can accommodate that as well. All right. And the Philadelphia Tax Center, I mean, we're going to cover that a little bit later, but it's available now in Spanish as well. So um, good info, all right? I've been in Philadelphia for several years. Thank you, Sandra. Congratulations. Good that, you know, we have thriving business, nonprofit and fraternal organization for several years as well. Thank you. I'm glad that you uh, are thriving business and I hope that the information we're about to share is helpful for you. All right, keep going. And thank you for those leaving comments in the chat. Uh, yeah, Christian, quick, can I oh, add one thing as we... <clears throat> as we move forward uh people this is meant to be interactive so please put your stuff in the chat uh like christian asked uh it's very important for us to know what your needs are and we can only know those by if you put them in the chat so please put your business name in there or what kind of business you have or if you're just starting up that's yes. fine too um you know uh no problem at all all right christian i'm sorry no, you're 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 great. Actually, this is also could be a, an opportunity for you to do networking in the chat. So feel free to give each other a shout out on your business app, follow each other on social, follow revenue and social actually. Uh at the bottom here of the footer of the presentation, you'll see a handle for Twitter. That's the logo, which is no longer Twitter's X. Um, and we need to update that. But fill out revenue or handle, it's the same one across all social media. And good segue here, you have in your screen a QR code or the steps on how to sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we're actually going through a restructuring or restrategy of our newsletter and we're gonna make it we're gonna make it better hopefully to we we receive tons of feedback in regards to our emailing campaigns and all that. And so we hope that you get to um follow us and sign up for our newsletter. So follow that QR code if you are a tech person. And if not, follow the link and the steps here. Find the get email updates link and you will be redirected to the sign up page. Okay, I'm taking long in the opener, so let's keep moving. Um, real quick, contact information. Let me also address something real about our customer service. I know it's sometimes hard to reach a person Wait times can be high during peak season and tracking down representative, it, it's sometimes a challenge. We know that, um, let's say, let, let's be honest, we have a 20% vacancy, not only in revenue and multiple agencies within the city and citywide. So one thing first, if you know anyone who's looking for a job, we're hiring. Second thing, be patient. Um, I know it. you know, everyone in the lines have a very specific situation where our team of representatives are also taking calls about technical situations with the tax center, people who needs uh, someone who hold their hand a little bit and some of the steps they're doing online and all that uh, and so forth. Whatever it is the case that you're calling, your call is as important as other. So please, if you can wait online, stay there, you'll reach someone, if not, Use any of these emails, revenue.fila.gov is your main one for any and all business or related questions. Go with revenue.fila.gov. And why would say that? Because you're going to get a case number. And that case number can be your tracking number for anything. If that same situation comes up again in the future, or if you need to refer that number for any other related issue, uh, it's good that you have it for your records. However, there are other, a few other um, email addresses. Here, just information, I'll keep them, update your phone books uh, or your uh, email records and everything, and make sure that you have our, our latest contact information. Phone number is the same. However, if you are a property owner in the city of Philadelphia, we recently made a, had to change our phone number to pay over the phone. So I don't know if you're using that line before, but that number changed. So the line here, this says pay by, by phone real estate taxes, 831-833-1913-0795. That's gonna be your automated line to pay real estate taxes or property taxes over the phone. Uh, I'll take your phone books again and make sure you use it. Uh, we actually make some improvement in, in that automated process. So it's 
quicker, easier, intuitive, and it's actually translated to Spanish as well. So like press two for Spanish or something like that. All right. Uh, thank you in the chat. Good to see here a few businesses. Um, and thank you to everyone who is sharing their information. And again, sign up for our newsletter. All right, keep going. Before we keep moving, we have two in-person offices or service centers. Our center, center city office in the municipal service building, uh, the concourse level uh, here in Center City. We also have one in the Northeast of Philadelphia, pretty convenient. It has parking, which is something uh, that is very convenient for some individuals. Um, you can drop returns in, per in paper. We have Dropbox. If you don't want to talk to one agent and just drop something, you can drop payments with check. Um, and that is a good way to say, always attach a voucher with your payment uh, and write as much as information as you can on the memo of a check like your account ID, your fee team number, the year we're supposed to apply that payment. Uh, it is very important. You have no idea all the times that we get checks that just have insufficient information. We will always cash it, but we might apply it wrong. To avoid that, please attach a voucher or include as much as information as you can. Northeast Philadelphia does not accept cash, Center City does. Uh, so that's another caveat if you're considering to make cash payments. Um, the North Philadelphia office is about to open um, either late summer, or at least early fall, but it's been renovated. It was closed during the pandemic. It's been closed for about three years, but it's about to reopen. And again, another convenient, a convenient uh, location for when it reopens. All right. Get in contact with us through the tax center. I'm not going to stay here longer, but there's a secure messaging. Once you open an account with the tax center, you will be able to securely um, message with a representative. It's not a live chat. It's a message system. So it's like sending emails through the tax center. It is a great platform or a great feature if you want to submit or exchange confidential information. Uh, you have no idea how many people like to send documents with their social security or email we're like no 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 no! please use a more secure way of sharing exchanging that information so we encourage you to go on the tax center use the secure online messaging uh, feature um and also the respond to a letter id on on the home page from the home page of the tax center you're going to find a respond to a letter hyperlink through that hyperlink if you follow it that means that any letter that comes out of our system now, it's gonna have a letter ID at the top right corner. Said that right. Top right corner. Let that letter ID, you enter it or you give it to the representative on the phone and they will be able to pull up the same letter you're looking at. And they'll be able to know if if you're, we're asking for additional information or we're asking to validate an address, we're asking for a payment, whatever it is, letter ID is a great way to communicate online or through the phone. Can I apply for a business tax ID at the Northeast? Yes, you can apply for a tax ID. Uh, like I said, you can do, download the form online. Um, we will drop the, the link to the form in the chat and bring the form already pre-filled or talk to a representative there. They do intakes. If they do all of that one-on-one -on -one assistance, if you need, you need it uh, at the Northeast Philadelphia office. Great question. All right. Rochelle, handing it over to you. We're gonna cover the top four business taxes. Um, let me say before Rochelle gets started, we have taxes almost for everything. Um, I, I often joke about when we're doing, I'm doing presentations in the communities, like we tax uh, the parking and we tax the valet who is even parking the car and all that. We have a, a very complex and comprehensive a tax infrastructure. It is it is meant to support businesses and it's meant to support city essential services and all that. However, we're going to focus on the top four. Most small businesses are going to in, only interact with this top four business taxes. However, again, with the disclaimer, if your tax, uh, if your, I'm sorry, if your business structure demands that you have more accounts or other business taxes, we always encourage you to uh, hire a professional for this. And it's best if you hire a local professional, someone who's knowledgeable. Um, I know that there's popular systems and companies out there that are nationwide uh, and has, you know, perks and all that. But because our local tax law, it's very specific. It is best if you hire someone local. All right. Let's go, Rochelle. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. 
we can go to the next slide. Thank you, whoever is um, helping. Um, these are just some reminders. Um, and it's just basically important to, and, and this is a reminder that I haven't seen often when I've done a presentation, but it's good, it's good advice. Um, business owners should never mix business records with their personal records. You should keep detailed accounting records for your business, your receipts, as well as your expenses on a monthly basis. Um, keep your invoices, receipts, and um, track your profits for tax purposes. And we always, as you have already been encouraged, we encourage you to seek advice from a CPA or tax advisor who understands um, all the um, levels of taxation um, federal, state, and local, and especially Philadelphia's taxes that might apply to your business. Um, there, the Business Resource Center, in, um, the BRIC in the free library at, at the Parkway offers free appointments with accountants monthly, usually, and also other good resources for small business um, companies. So we just wanted to remind you of that and make you aware of it if you aren't already. Um, should I control the slides, Chris, or no? All right, all right. We all we want you to be aware of our tax rates and that the fact that they can change. Um, this year they're not changing, but in most years in the past they have. The rate for our BERT for the 2023 tax year, um, and those returns are filed in the subsequent year. Our tax returns are filed after the year ends, usually in April around the tax filing deadline, same as your federal taxes. Current tax rate for twenty, what well, a tax rate for twenty twenty three, which is also going to be our continuing tax rate, as I understand it, is tax on net income of five point eight one percent. Your tax on gross receipts for your BERT return is one point four one five mils or point zero zero one one four one five. We have waged and earnings taxes. Um, resident rate is three point seven five percent. For non-residents is 3.44%. Um, and you'll see that those rates repeat for some of our other taxes. The net profit tax for the 2023 um, year also um, has a return filed in April of the following year, April of 24. And the resident and non-resident rates were the same there. And our school income tax return has a similar rate to the resident rate. That's because that tax applies to residents of the city and you'll see that that rate usually mirrors our, um, our earnings or income tax for the year. Next slide. Um, we're gonna talk about the BERT, the Business Income and Receipts Tax. Um, um, and it's our first of our major taxes. Um, you can find information on it at the website using the link on the slide. Um, this tax applies um, to every entity or anyone doing business in the city. Um, um, and it has two components. It has a gross tax component and it also has an income or net income component to the tax. We also have a net profit tax, which applies to some business structures. If you happen to have a partnership, a limited, li limited liability partnership, or you're a sole proprietor, you will probably find that this tax applies to you. Um, and um, or if you are, if you happen to be a partner or the owner of a partnership who's a resident of the city of Philadelphia, you can also um, be responsible for this tax. Next slide. Business income and receipts tax. Bert, as we stated before, has two parts. There's a tax on the gross receipt, the total amount of money that you make in your business in the city of Philadelphia. The current rate, as we said for that, is 1.415 mils. The first, what we really want to make sure you are aware of, what we want you to be aware of, is that the first $100,000 of your sales that you make in any calendar year or fiscal year is excluded. Um, if your Philadelphia sales are less or $100,000 or less, um, you will find that you do not need to file BERT, but we do encourage you to file a no tax liability form. Um, so that you can report, and that's so you can report to the city of Philadelphia that you don't have a BERT tax liability. Um, without having that form or having you file a return, we have no way at the city of knowing like how much money you made, basically. That's your way of reporting that you don't owe us any money for BERT. Um, if you have more than $100,000 of sales, even if you have a net loss or negative net income, you might still need to pay um, 
the gross receipts tax. So it's important to file the BERT return. And it's also it may also be important to report that loss. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but you should talk to your accountant um, to get advice on that. The tax on the net income portion of the um, of the form, there's tax on the net income that you make, the amount of your profit, as I said, that you make is also reportable on the BERT. That's the second part of the tax. The rate for that is 5.81%. Um, and you'll use the federal, you'll use your federal tax form C if you're a sole proprietor. Um, always, and we just remind you again, always use the correct form to file um, for the correct year. And that's because rates can change, but also if you use the tax center, here's a cell for the tax center, um, the tax center will drive you to the right forms. So we really also encourage online filing. The due date um, for these returns tends to be the same as your federal tax return. Um, usually it's on April um, 15th, unless there's a holiday or some something special going on. And if you have a tax liability, you will need to make an estimated payment towards the next tax year um, with the BERT return. Oh, I mean, All right, we got it. The, the, most, the most important thing to know about the BERT is that the first, um, again, $100,000 of your sales is not taxable um, due to our exemptions and exclusions. And if your Philadelphia sales are less than $100,000, you do not need to file a return, but you should definitely um, complete the no tax liability form and file that. And just to complement what Rochelle is just saying, we you do want to submit something because now with the new system, we're sending on file notices monthly. One, it can get pretty annoying to receive monthly correspondence by revenue just to tell you that you have on file. So if you if you know that you're gonna have or, or calculate it with your tax account that you have uh, less than one hundred thousand, consider to submit a no tax liability is the best way. Right. It also prevents you from, like like he said, from receiving the non-filers and also having problems as you go to set up new accounts for your business. Yeah. Um, who, who has to pay the BERT? A lot of people. Individuals, partnerships, associations, limited liability companies, or what we call LLCs and corporations. Um, in order to be liable for it, you must be engaged in business. Um, for profit in the city of Philadelphia for business um, or have a professional or other activity. In terms of disregarded entities, and we these are special and they need special help getting their accounts set up. One is a single member limited liability company is required to file a BERT return under the owner's name. So if your business is structured this way, it's important to notice this. Under the owner's name, business account number, and the owner's social security number. Um, Qualified subchapter S corp subsidiaries um, are required to file a BERT return under the owner's name also and the owner's business account number and their social security number. One thing that's different with disregarded entities is that if you happen to have an agency tax like the city wage tax or a real estate tax or use and occupancy tax, you are required to file those taxes in the name of the business or under the business um, business's name, um, the account number assigned to that business, and the EIN number associated with that business. Um, there are some questions in the chat, or is there anything I should respond to? No, nothing in the chat yet. Okay, but I was going to add that in, 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 in regards to these regarded entities, um, you pro if you initiate to register in the tax center, you're probably going to be able to finish registration just because of what, what this last bullet point says. That whole setup when you have a, you know, one entity, in this case, let's say the business, uh, who is going to be responsible for wage, real estate tax, or occupancy, you and all, um, sometimes it's difficult and for our system to link those two accounts online. So you will need to reach out to our representative. If you are one of those individuals with a disregarded entity structure, just reach out either by phone or email. Our representative do it all the time, so they know what to do, but you won't be able to do it by yourself on the tax center, unfortunately. We're working on it to uh, you know, get to a point where we can link those accounts and you can do it on your own, but we also want to do it right. So... 
it's best if you reach out to a representative to complete the registration process. All right, sorry. No, thank you. Thanks for that, Chris. Um, what is a Philadelphia receipt? Let's talk about receipts. The definition of receipts is broad. It includes everything, cash, credit, any property that you receive in, um, in exchange for work that you do, um, or that you or anything you receive as a result of um, performing a service or conducting business in a city. Only receipts um, for business done in Philadelphia are subject to the gross receipts tax, sales of tangible personal property. That's anything that you can lift, move, carry <laughs> that's not nailed to the ground or land. Our receipts are taxable if the goods are delivered to a customer in Philly. Sales of services. Those receipts are taxable if the service is performed in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. We do have one exception to the service rule, and that's for software companies. Um, they're taxable um, in the city or in the place that their customer receives the benefit of their um, service. So if you happen to be a software company and you service customers in New Jersey and you, um, you sell your services to them in Jersey and they receive and use those services in um, Jersey, that's not subject to Philadelphia um, per tax. That's referred to as market-based sourcing. Um, and we're working on some more regulations to further clarify that um, because um, services are scheduled to change if a state law passes. But that just is to give you a little background on that. Next slide, please. All right, what is Nexus? Nexus is the level of connection between a taxing jurisdiction between Philadelphia and a business that is sufficient for Philadelphia basically to impose a tax on the legal entity or the business that's conducting business in the city. Beginning in January of 2019, companies located outside of Philadelphia, we have remote sellers there, but doing business in Philadelphia do not need to file or pay the BERT um, unless they have more than $100,000 in sale. Remember that $100,000 is or, or lower is exempt from BERT. It's important for a, um, it's important to notice a business that has a physical location in the city of Philadelphia will have nexus regardless of the level of business that they conduct or the amount of funds that they earn. All right, so that's pretty much a recap of that slide. Um, for BERT businesses starting now, if you're starting a new business now, you have an option to pay quarterly estimated taxes in the second year um, of your BERT, refi BERT return filing, and then go back to an annual estimated payment requirement in your third year. Um, I really don't want to talk about this form a lot because the next slide really shows it mm -hmm. better, and I can talk more about it to you there. So say you're a new business and you started your business in 2023. Um, I'm selling flowers. Or I'm, I'm a new florist, okay? And I'm working in Philadelphia. You start your business, you make sales. In 2024, you have to, in on April 15th, 2024, which is supported by year two of your business, you have to report and pay taxes on 2023. Um, as a, if you register and there's a there's an option, you have to opt to be um, a new business. Um, if you opt to be a new business owner and you apply, because it's a new business registration too, right, Chris? I'm sorry. If you're a new business and you apply to be seen as a new business, because there mm -hmm. is an application, in your second year, when you go to file your first return, um, you will only have to pay your 2023 BERT taxes due in that year. Right. In number in year three of your business, you would need to report the results of your 2024 year, again, on April 15th of 2025. When you go to file your second BERT return, you would have the option to pay either of the full amount of the estimate towards 2025, or you could elect to make four quarterly installments. Um, installment payments on the dates noted on the screen. In your fourth year of business, you would go to report the activity of your third year of business again in April of 2026. And you um, won't have the option to not pay the estimate or to pay in quarterly installments. You would have to pay the full amount of the estimate. Um, 
the reason that this was all implemented um, was to try to give new businesses an opportunity to spread their costs um, over the over the years as they begin their business and not have to pay have such a hard time paying the estimate due for the final year. But it, you do catch up in your fourth year, and then you're required to pay the full amount from the third year going forward. Thank you. All right. Um, we have a question in the chat. Uh, Rochelle it says, does the less than $100,000 in sales criteria applies to both the gross receipts and the net income elements of the birth? Yes. And when we go, we'll be going through an example of how the returns look yes. as we go for on further on in our presentation. And I'll be able to better explain that to you. But there is an, a, there is an exemption of the $100,000 and there is a proportional share of right. an exclusion of net income. Um, that comes off the BERT return. But that'll be clear as you see our example of the BERT return that's coming up. Right, correct. Right. Net profits tax. Um, this tax should not be confused with the net income portion of the BERT return. They are not the same. And yes, you do have to pay both. Um, and NPT is calculated on the profits of a business reported on your by, by your accounting records. If you... Um, that's according to our regulation. Um, this means that the gross receipts that you receive or the gross sales that you make or the gross amount that you make less your expenses and deduction equals your net income. And that's what um, this tax is based on. The rate is the same as I pointed out earlier as our wage tax. For 2023, it was 3.75% if you're a resident of the city of Philadelphia. And if you're a non-resident who does business in a city, it's 3.44%. Um, the due date is the same as your federal taxes as we've repeated, but you um, but you do need to pay an estimate towards this tax in June of each year. And um, again, if you live in Philadelphia, if you're a Philadelphia resident, 100% of your net profits are taxed by Philly. It does not matter where you earn the income. Mm -hmm. So that's just important to remember. And no. Next slide, please. Wage tax and earnings tax. These are um, employers in Pennsylvania um, are required to withhold wage tax from the salaries, wages, commissions, and any other compensation paid to their employees um, who either live in Philadelphia or work in Philadelphia. Employees living in Philadelphia um, who who work for um, employers who are outside of Philadelphia. Say for instance, you work for a, a company in New York, but you're a Philadelphia resident and New York's not required to withhold your taxes. Um, you are required to file an earnings tax um, because that employer annually, because your employer is not withholding those taxes. You must file quarterly wage tax returns online at our tax center. Um, we no longer accept paper returns, Wage tax must be paid electronically um, on the Philadelphia Tax Center. It's, um, payments are due separately from quarterly returns and are determined based on the amount of money that you're required to remit. Um, some forms of income are not subject to wage tax. Um, it's important to know that, such as scholarships, pensions, um, life insurance, um, health insurance, death benefits, premiums, et cetera. Um, Check our website, but also ask your tax advisor about this, mm -hmm. I would say, because we do have some guidance on this on our revenue website. For low and and the wage tax and also the earnings tax web pages will tell you tell you what types of things are exempt from the tax also. So check it out. For low income employees or, in, or low income employees or residents working in um, Philadelphia, um, they may apply for a refund of 5% if it's approved for tax, for, if they're approved for tax forgiveness under Pennsylvania's Schedule SP. And so basically what that means, if when you file the Pennsylvania um, state tax return, you have to complete the noted schedule, then you, you're eligible to file for a refund um, of city wage tax. Uh, and this is uh, just to complement what Rochelle is mentioning, um, you're probably, if you're only a small business or do not have any employees, you're going to be doing MPT, but wage tax, uh, then if you have employee, employees, you have become an employer with the city, and then you'll be responsible, let's say, for wage tax again. 
always good to reconsult uh, with a tax professional, but not to give you uh, confused between one or the other. Thanks, Chris, for that no reminder. <laughs> the last tax I think we're going to talk about is use and occupancy tax. Um, this tax is a business tax. It applies to trade and commercial use and occupancy of real estate in Philadelphia. Um, it's due if a business is located in Philadelphia, if the business is operated from a Philadelphia residence or a tenant, subtenant, owners of property use the property for business purposes. Property not property not used for business purposes or vacant business property is also is exempt from this tax. The rate is 1.21% um, 1 or 21% of the assessed value of the property. There are monthly returns that have to be filed online for these on the 25th of every month. And the payments also must be made online. There are a few exemptions. Property not used for business purposes is exempt from this tax or vacant commercial or business property is also exempt. It's also important to know that there's a 2000 um, annual exemption amount associated mm -hmm. with this tax that represents $165,300 of the assessed value of the property. Chris is laughing, go to the next slide. Yes, that part, some people, it's, is it 2000? And then when you do the conversion really to, because it's we're, we wanna make it easier for you to understand what that exemption in dollar amounts represents, but it's really of the assessed value. So we want you to one, have all the facts and two, be able you know, to make the correlation. Uh, and a good piece of information here, if you are just curious or don't know, let's say you have a property, uh, commercial property, you can go on property.philo.gov and you can see what is, what is the, the value of that for that property on that website, all right? That's a matter of public record. Now we're getting to the case study that somebody asked about. Um, and the first part, if we go to the next page, um, assumes quite a few things. Case study number one is ABC Limited Liability Company. It's a single member limited liability company that designs websites for small businesses. So here we have a sole proprietor, basically. Um, this person, um, because they're a sole proprietor of individually owned um business, they will be liable for both BERT and MPT um, taxes. Um, the other things we're assuming about them is they provide services. So they're providing services. The owners of Philadelphia resident, again, no matter where they live, they're going to be subject to this tax because Philadelphia residents are, well, for MPT purposes, they're mm -hmm. subject to this tax. The business operates from a rented space in Philadelphia. They're Philadelphia based and they have three employees, two Philadelphia residents, and also um, one non-resident living in Montgomery County. So this business also is gonna have wage tax liabilities. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Um, so basically tax data is ABC elects to report their net income under method two for BERT. Um, that's federally taxable, federal taxable income. And that means it's basically based off of their federal tax return. Their gross sales um, or sales everywhere were 150,000. Their net income or federally taxable income is 120,000. Um, their Philadelphia sales and receipts, all, all their sales were done in Philly and they have a loss carry forward from the previous year of 22 of $10,000. So considering those facts that we just went over, this is what the BERT return would sort of look like once it was fully completed on our tax center. So your gross receipts or summarize your gross receipts from services, again, $150,000. Here's on the fourth or fifth line, we see the fourth line, we see the statutory exclusion that they're allowed since they made more than $100,000. Mm -hmm. They're given $100,000 is taken off of their gross receipts and they end up only being taxed on $50,000 at the going rate, which results in an, a tax amount due of $71. When it comes to their net income, their $120,000 of net income is documented. Um, it's all earned in Philly, so it's all taxable, it's all subject to tax. But from there, we take from there we take um, away a proportional share of their net income based on the calculation at the bottom of the page, the statutory net income deduction. They basically say 
take the lower of taxable receipts. Their receipts were $150,000, so $100,000 is lower. Um, the apportionment factor, since all their income is earned in Philly, is 100% for Philly. The apportioned net income before the deduction is $120,000. So to calculate the prorated share that we they get to exclude, they take the $120,000 over their total gross receipts of $150,000, and they come up with an amount that they get to deduct, a proportional amount that they get to deduct of $80,000. So that goes, that ends up showing up on a net income schedule as the statutory net income deduction again. Under that, you have the last carry forward um, that we, that they noted and informed us on when we got the details of this company. So they get to deduct um, the loss from the previous year. Um, that leaves them with a taxable income of $30,000. And when multiplied by the current rate, you come up with $1,743 due um, as a tax on their net income that they earn. Their total BERT li tax liability is 118.14 based on an addition of the two balances, the gross receipt balance tax due and the net income tax due. Um, so that's that one. Next page. And what it's helpful just to complement that real quick, like Rachelle is mentioning, if you owe your accountant is doing, the, doing this on the tax center, most of this calculation, the system will do. Even the carry loss forward, if you have it for the previous year, don't document it and we'll enter it. The system will carry all that for you in the tax center. Next, we have the net um, profit um, tax return that would be completed for this case study. Again, going back to the facts, their net income was 120,000. The rate, the applicable or current rate is applied to it to come up with the total tax due. Here's where it gets tricky. And it's and like um, Chris said, the tax center, if you do your returns on the tax center, you won't have to worry about any of these calculations um, because the center will do it for you um, or it would stop you and not let you go forward if you're making a mistake. Mm -hmm. The tax center or yourself would calculate um, a credit against the net um, profit tax due based on the net income portion of the BERT tax that you paid. Um, that amount was 1,743 that was due on the net income and they give you a 60% credit um, against net profit tax. Um, so what that does is in essence, just reduce the net profit tax to the amount shown, 3,454. That would be the amount that business owned, owed the city for net profit tax. Um, there's a note here. Can I go oh, back to that note? Sorry. I just want to make sure I'm not missing something. <laughs> yes. Um, so basically, a disregarded single, this is an example of a disregarded single member LLC or sole proprietor. They'll file the BERT and the net returns under the individual owner's name. And we talked about that a little bit more in, in the earlier in this presentation. Um, however, a disregarded single member LLC with employees must also register for and file wage tax. Okay, so we're that's the next example on the next slide, I think right. we're going to. Um, and because they have employees, they must um, register um, the entity, the wage tax would be filed under the business name of this company. It wouldn't be filed under the owner's name. The business name under the business, it'll be filed under ABC LLC. Um, They'll register for a wage tax account. For the two resident employees, tax must be withheld at the resident rate of 3.75 and remitted to the city regardless of where they work. And that's because they're a business in Pennsylvania. Your accountant or your tax advisor will tell you that. Um, if they have a non-resident employee, they must, um, since they have one non-resident employee, they must withhold and remit um, to the city that tax at 3.44%. And that's pretty much it. Next slide, please. But, oh, before we talk about any other taxes, because Chris is going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on this example from anyone? Feel free to either drop it in the chat or come up mute real quick if you have any questions about it. And we can go over it at the end, right, Chris? Yes. All right, keep going. Thank you, Chris. All right. Um, like I said, there is 
several other taxes in the city of Philadelphia. Um, we have a coin operated or previously coin operated now me mechanical amusement tax, several. Uh, what is pertinent to you is what probably Rochelle just discussed. Uh, however, I'm gonna go real quick over real estate tax. Um, if you are a property owner in the city, uh, either an, a property or, I mean, a resident who lives in their property or a property that operates in a commercial space and any of that, uh, you are responsible for property taxes or real estate tax. And, and that tax is, it's changing a little bit, not in tax rate, tax rate stays the same. And if you are aware or not, uh, let me just uh, remind you, real estate taxes are calculated based on the property's value or the assessment, which is our perform our issue by the Office of Property Assessment, OPA. And when they perform or each of the assessment, we take that and calculate at the tax rate here. Uh, not that you need to do any of that, we just bill you and you will pay whatever is in the bill. However, let's say you are owner occupied resident in the city of Philadelphia, we have some exemptions, abatements, or tax credits that you can benefit from. Uh, I'm not gonna stay on it for a long time, but for the most popular and easiest to get uh, is the Homestead exemption. We're gonna drop the link in the chat. If you are resident in Philadelphia who lives and owns the property, reach out uh, either yeah. online, by phone. We have a Homestead hotline uh, where you can answer any questions and they can even let's say walk you through application process it's very easy to get on it the exemption was raised to a hundred thousand dollars for ne the next year bill um which is due in march 31st every year and uh, so you can take a hundred thousand dollars cent of your property value that turns in, in dollar amount is about thirteen hundred ninety nine dollars uh or one thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars so feel free to reach out if you this is only for for owner occupied properties in this in in the city um again there's a an exemption built into the mpt that you can take against your your property if you're using it for for commercial activity uh all right any questions about real estate tax before we jump all through the taxes feel free to again leave it on the chat when monitoring uh would be happy to come to answer any of those there's income, it's called income tax, and I'm gonna stay on it. If you're a resident of Philadelphia who earn something uh, that is any income that is not from a job, uh, dividends, royalties, and capital gains, short-term rental income, all of that, it's taxable if you're a resident in Philadelphia, do every year, same year, same um, same date as the federal taxes, uh, the residence uh, tax rate. Actually, the tax rate is wrong. Sorry about that. It's 3.75. <laughs> this is for 2022. It changed for 2023. All right. Uh, like I said, all these taxes are going to be in the select deck, which the, um, the CCP and power up are going to change with everyone for your reference if you want to go through any of those. Uh, but again, it's best if you consult with a tax professional. I Okay, here we go. We have a question before we go with enforcement. I file an, if I file an extension for a fellow tax return, does that exit? No. Um, they're actually, do I need to file with the city for an extension? They aren't, uh, any extension for filing. Uh, I mean, I will let Rachel answer that, uh, if, if I fail to communicate anything, there are no extension, uh, with the city. There are payment plans in terms of payment, but, but returns as, as in the tax return, they're due, they, they, they did or do, and then it's just, you will, you will be. You, you will have a no file on, on the system for the return. Then in terms of payments, well, you can work with the revenue department to get in a payment plan or something to accommodate that payment, but not really an extension. Rachel, did I miss anything about that question? Yeah, uh, we, we have no form for you to file an extension form. Unlike the federal government, there's no form. We will, if you happen to be a taxpayer who is has filed for a federal extension, that is fine. Our, it's complicated. Our city will grant you that same extension, but they don't grant an extension on payments. There is no extension um, for payment past the due date. You either pay on the due date or interest and penalties accrue. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. We honor your extension for filing, but, they, but we still expect the payment due on a due date. So if you can estimate or approximate what you think you owe, 
it would be best to pay it by the April due date on any return that needs to be filed. And you can pay directly through the tax center on the due date. Correct. And I know we're going to talk about enforcement, enforcement, so it's a good segue. But if you know that a situation in regards to payment is going to happen, and let's say you cannot afford a full payment by the due date, it is best that you reach out, disclose your situation. You don't need to get into personal details, but the more you can share, our department will work with you to make something to accommodate it. But if we need to know it, because the minute that payment is due, then the very next day start occurring interest and penalties at whatever uh, the rates are set by the federal government. So whenever we don't know, we cannot work with you. Uh, it's not like we're going to give you necessarily a discount all that, but let's say you enter a payment agreement, so you'll be in compliance to be able to operate. You will not get a Cal revocation, for example, which is, you know, uh, a revocation of your license, a commercial activity license, for example. So it is best if you contact the department, if you know that you're not going to be able to meet the liabilities by the day. Did that was that okay, Rachel? <laughs> Perfect. All right, enforcement. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Joy because we've been doing most of the talking, so we want to keep it a little bit uh of a movement here, so you don't get bored. Again, this is a, a very complex and heavy topic. We're gonna do it lightly, uh, and I'll, I'll chime in if I have to. But Joy, my quick, please take it off. Hi, everybody. Um, so really the bottom line is if you are struggling to pay your tax bill, don't wait to reach out to us. Um, we do have uh, payment plans available. We have payment agreements. Um, we had a payment agreement specifically if your business was impacted by the pandemic or Hurricane Ida. Um, the your tax issues are not going to go away. Right. So it's important that you get to us in contact with us as soon as possible so we, we can work with you. OK, well, we work with everybody. Uh, our goal is to have everybody in compliance um, with their tax bill. OK, uh, next slide, Christian. And I, I stress something real quick about that, if I may. Um, it happens often. We've been doing presentations. Some people, you know, we're running a business, uh, let's say, between 2006 and 2012, a long time ago, they went to a regular employment in, 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 in the interim and stopped doing business and probably get behind in some of their tax responsibilities. If you are looking to get back into running a business again, being a business owner, reopening the same business or a different business, you were doing candles and now you want to do a car watch or something else or doing services. We will have records that back in the day, let's say again, 2012 as an example, you had issues or stopped filing or, you know, whatever it is, if you want to get back into being a business owner, reopen a business in, in the city of Philadelphia, we want to help you. Uh, we want you to, to get your business again off the ground. So reach, the, reach out and we will be able to do something to accommodate your situation. It happens. Uh, you're not the only one who may have done that, like, going back to regular employment and whatever. But the most important thing is that you reach out. Uh, if you do it by yourself and you think it's good, this is not, this is not gonna resolve by itself, all right? There Thank you. you. Um, so yeah, getting to compliance, definitely don't wait. Like I said, your tax issues are not gonna go away. Um, what's gonna happen is you're gonna continue receiving mail from the city. And once your taxes become delinquent, um, we're gonna send it to a collection agency and you'll be contacted by, contact by them too continuously. Um, so make sure you're signing up for, like I said, the payment plans, uh, the payment agreements. We also have offers and compromise, which lets you negotiate a little bit with the city as far as what your payment's going to be or what it can be. Um, get into compliance voluntarily. You know, it's better if we don't have to come to you. Um, and then, like I said, finally, the, the get into a payment plan. Um, we'll work with you, whatever your situation is. Just don't wait. Great. Thank you. Move in to the next slide. Um, and I know we share our contact information at the beginning, but uh, we'll do it again later in the chat if you have any questions, because we keep saying reach out to us, but if you did not um, take note of for our contact information, we'll, we'll share the contact us page, but that is the bottom line. All right, Philadelphia Tax Center. I hope that if not everyone, most of you in here in this, in this um, Zoom call have interact with the tax center at any point. 
Um, it is, we are very, you know, we're very excited about it. It is kind of like taking the department from, from a very old mainframe system to a 21st century. Um, it has built in web notices, uh, text message cap capability. We're not using it, but I'm just taking uh, talking about some of the features. Um, you're able to perform a lot of uh, uh, interactions or perform a lot of actions, let's say payments, applications, submitting a refund request, submitting a claim, uh, again, tax returns. A lot of this ac activities you can do even without a username and password. So the Philadelphia Tech Center, it's here hopefully to stay and we are constantly evolving and improving it. Um, we're actually working towards releasing a large upgrade that that it goes nationwide. So we are with a company that it's it's higher in multiple other jurisdictions. And yearly they take feedback and 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 input from all the jurisdictions and, and release large nationwide upgrades. And those upgrades are coming in October of this year. And that is going to be happening every single year going forward. And that is just a, a wonderful wonderful support to have, right? That we are doing exchange, exchanging best practices with other jurisdiction and just improving the system to make it better uh, for the experience of the user and all that. It is accessible mobile devices translated into Spanish and for all functionalities and include electronic applications for payment agreements. So let's say you, you know you're not gonna be able to meet a full payment. You can go at that same day, let's say, when it's due, you can, wake up, you know, you cannot make the full payment. You can select, apply for a payment agreement and follow the prompts on the, the screen. And the system is going to offer you the same terms and and obligations as you were talking to a customer representative. We have various, actually we have kind of like two regular payment agreements, standard and preferred, depending on certain criteria. If you meet either for the preferred or the, um, or the standard payment agreement, the system will offer it to you. One has up to 60 months of a payment agreement, the other is about up to 48. And the system will do the calculation and offer it as you were talking to a customer representative. Some people think, oh, I'm gonna get a, the best deal by calling or like talking to a representative. Actually, it's gonna give you both the same as if you were talking. So you prefer to go online. Again, pretty easy to do it. Um, it allows you to uh, grant third-party access to accountants. This is actually the best way to handle tax center businesses. Let's say you open or register yourself, but you hire an accountant. A uh, best practice is that you not share your username and password, is that you tell your accountant, and most accountants know this, we go and talk to accountants every year and, and different conferences and, 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 and professional groups. However, um, it is best that you keep your personal login and allow them to 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 receive a third party access, not share your. Let's say you change accountants, you don't want necessarily them to have that login, right? There is a tax center guy. Here is a website. Feel free to use it. It has multiple materials, documents, uh, step by step guides, uh, PDF in in video form, whatever it is. Uh, it's pretty informational for first time users. Uh, this is how it looks when you go into the homepage. Uh, this is actually a pretty uh, old, as you can see in the time timestamp um, screenshot, but it's mainly the same, the same functionalities and panels. We call this each each quadrant here. It's a we call them panel, uh, but it basically is an area where you can just follow the the hyperlinks and do or perform an activity or an action within the tax center. Uh, it's a great resource if you're not using it yet. All right, here's really like a Q&A to make it, I know probably less boring, but why should I get a tax center username and password? Few reasons, the main ones are, you can view balances, file returns and make payments. Uh, if you do get or sign up for a username and password, you will get access to doing more than if you were doing it without signing in. You can apply apply for tax credits. We have several tax credits and we work in, in close relation with the Department of Commerce. So anything that has been promoted as a tax credit within the Department of Commerce, uh, or if you're learning about tax credits, let's say with the power up um, agency here, 
all those tax credits are, are available for you to apply on the tax center um, if it's a city tax credit. You can view electronic messages, like, like I said, access letters that have been issued from the department, upload W-2s, T-99s, and so many others. Here is a screenshot of a fake taxpayer. And this is what it looks like when you have at least two accounts, BERT and MPT. Um, this one actually is giving them an action center. So one other good feature of the tax center is you get notifications or alerts. You will you'll be able to see, hey, I'm trying to obtain a license with Eclipse or you know the license and inspection system, and I'm not able to do so. I want to. I need a tax clearance certificate. One, you can obtain that tax clearance certificate now in minutes or in seconds in the tax center. But if you're not complying, you can come here and see what it's wrong, what I'm missing. Am I missing a payment? Am I missing a return? Or I did file a return, but did not go through accordingly. You can come back here, go into the action center and see what is missing. Um, another cool and great feature is the more options here. It's everything else that you can do. Uh, again, payments, returns, uh, you can update your files with us, your mailing address, you moved when you, you know, you want to update your records with us, you go here. And then a cool feature is the third party access. So if you are granting a third party access to your account, uh, account and professional, here's where you come. All right. Again, it is best if you have your own signing uh, username and password and do not share that one with the with your accountant. Um, do I need to have a to, or log in to make a payment? No, you can make payments with a username. You can even you can even print a voucher. Let's say you want to do a payment by mail, um, and you don't have a voucher, or your your accountant was preparing your tax return for you and say, hey, your amount is seventeen hundred, uh, pay by April fifteen. You can come on the on the tax center and select pay my payment by mail as a form of payment. And that's not really a payment by mail, but what the system is gonna do is gonna generate a voucher that you can rip off and attach to your check and ensure that you, that payment is being applied to the correct. Let's say you have multiple business, multiple bird accounts, and you wanna have all, all those affairs separated, ensuring that something goes to, to the place it needs to be applied, having a voucher uh but even easier doing online submit the payment uh online uh i received a letter from the department of revenue can i respond to a letter we talk about this but yes you can respond to a letter without needing to log in or having uh to to to, to use your user, username and password uh, again things that you can do without a username and password is payment uh online make a payment by e-check debit credit card a check is free. A check is really electronic check, which is banking account. You're checking or saving accounts. That's what it means. So you will need your banking account number and your routing and um, routing number for the bank or in financial institution. If you're using a debit or credit card, there's going to be fees, processing fees that are vendor charges, not us. That's not a fee that goes to us. Debit cards has a flat fee, so that's the cheapest method. Let's go with that. But if you're making payments with a credit card, that the fee is based on a percentage of the total amount. So if you were, let's say, paying a business who has a great bill, a large bill, your fees are going to be larger. So just take that into consideration. These are not fees that we assess. This is our vendor. Real estate uh, assistance programs, like the home state I mentioned, you can apply without username and password. You can apply for payment agreements for property taxes without a uh, uh, username and password. You can request a wage tax refund. Um, you can respond to a letter and request tax clearance certificates. I am. I feel like I'm talking too fast and a lot, so I want to pause for a minute. Any questions so far? Uh, feel free to drop it in the chat. We're we're near the end, um, so we want to ensure that everyone um, leaves with all the information and also questions answered. Can multiple accounts have access to the same account? We have something called secondary logons and third-party access. Again, most of the cases is going to go to your tax preparer, or let's say you have multiple employees, so you will have a wage tax account, but you have 
20, 30, you're running a daycare, 100 employees. So instead of having a tax preparer, you may have a also a payroll company. So payroll companies, it's something someone you probably uh, uh, grant a third party access to, all right? Okay, like I said, we are near the end. Any questions so far before we run through odds and ends? I don't want to leave yeah, anyone people. behind. This is your time. Uh, we've been doing most of the talking. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, feel, people feel free to ask questions. Uh, it's important to get this all right and understand it all as much as you can. So don't be shy. Ask some questions if you want um, before we move on. I agree. <laughs> what he said, uh, feel free to come off mute at this point in time if you, if you want to. I'm... I have a question. Go ahead, ma'am. Um, I recently tried to apply for an um for my business LLC business, but um, when I called and asked for assistance, I was told that I need to do it twice, one with the EIN number and another with my social security number, and that when I apply, I should do sole proprietor. And then um, the second time I go in, I must um, apply as the business um, tax receipt. Is that correct? I didn't feel like it was, but I could be wrong. So it all depends. So it sounds like this is a disregarded entity uh, registration. Um, if If the... If the company with the EIN is going to hold some of the tax accounts and your personal SSN is going to hold a different, let's say, the MPT outside of the, the bird and separate it, you do need to register double kind of thing. And we will do the link after you do that. But I want to make sure that we do that and help you. So let's connect uh, offline and I will have a representative, you know, uh, schedule a call and maybe sit down with you and do everything we can to to help you and walk you through the process, right? Because um, it, it happens most of the time with kind of like similar structure when we, we we need to open the business account with some of the tax account and the personal account and then do the link internally so you can see it on, on the public side front. So let's do something. I'm going to leave my email here in the chat and send me an email, let's connect, and I will make sure that a, a representative help you with that, okay? All right, anyone else wants so, to come up, come up here? Thank you. you yes, yeah, so I have a question. Um, I want to know that if you have any complicated issues, let's say, for instance, if you're one of those people who had another business and um, after the pandemic you pivoted and have a new business and you need to join the two, is that something you can do over the phone or is it better to make an appointment to come in? I would say it all depends on how comfortable you feel, like and how complicated or what's your situation. Our phone and and in person assistance is kind of like basically the same for intake assistance. However, like I, I did mention at the beginning that we are having a hard time uh, with reaching. Re re customer representative over the phone because of, of okay. hiring. So uh, it, it is surprising for more, more, for some people, but our, our in-person assistant, it's 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 easier uh, if you need uh, more one-on-one -on -one because the wait okay. time sometimes are just 50 minutes really in person. And the phone can be sometimes 45 minutes. So okay. if you do want to come in person, either to the Northeast or the Municipal Service Building, you can you can do that as well, and I'm sure that you that again they will work work with you. And I'm leaving my email. If you're ever in, in the building and have any issues reaching a, a, a representative downstairs, I'm here uh -huh. on the sixth floor. We can coordinate something okay. and ensure that your your needs are met. Okay, but something like that, do you need to have made an appointment in advance, or can I show no. up at eight? Okay, great. Okay. No need, no no need for appointments. We had appointments infrastructure or system during the pandemic. No anymore. Yes. Uh, walk-ins are, and again, if you're here before 10 a.m. or even 11 a.m., uh -huh. 15 minutes is the wait time. I, I mean, it, okay. sometimes I feel bad for people that reach out on social media and say, I've been, I've been on for an hour waiting to reach someone. I'm like, I understand, but in person, really, it's just doing better. <laughs> okay. 
because we've right. been, it, it's been so hard to to also fill the positions on the call center. I mean, yep. now with Amazon and all that, so many people are just going other other places. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. I did see a, a, a hand raised. So feel free to come up mute. Yeah, I'm, I she dropped her hand. Uh, Leilin, uh, did you have a question? I guess her, her question was answered. All right. Again, if we don't address your, your question, my email is in the chat, the same as everybody else, the contact information or, or the city, and, and feel free to reach out. We'll happy to connect with you and help you however we can. All right, let's go through some odds and ends. And this is just wrapping up the presentation. It's been a great presentation. Thank you. I hope that you did not fall asleep in the other end, um, but at the same time that you find it informational and that you are able to make informed decisions with your tax advisors. All right. Some, oh, next slide, Christian. Here we go. Real quick, just some reminders. I do like to promote the Philadelphia slash pay. It's like a payment center for the city because once you reach that website, fill out a gov slash pay, you can redirect to anything. Let's say you have a viol vi violation that you need to pay. You have a bill for, for water. You have a, a bill with taxes. We have several websites. I'm not happy about it. It is just the way it works in city government. So some, some bills you were paying one website, some bills you were paying a different website. So you, we don't want you to remember all the websites. Easier than that, we have a payment center. Go on philo.gov slash pay. It's, it's, if payment is what you're looking for. And from there, you will see different boxes or you know hyperlinks and re, we'll redirect you to the website that you need to make a payment. Uh, and we do want you to pay on the correct website because sometimes people make payments in some other places. Uh, that, by the way, this is a good segue to say a note if you ever been placed with a collection agency called Revenue Collections Bureau, that is a collection vendor for us who performs collection work on behalf of the Department of Revenue. That is not a revenue department. And I say that only if you ever were placed with them, but no longer your account is no longer with them, you don't need to continue make, pay, making payments to that agency. You can make payments directly to, to revenue, to the Philadelphia Revenue Department. So Revenue Collections Bureau, it is a vendor, authorized vendor but only if your account is, is placed with them. So it is very important. Always look at the header of a letter of, or a bill who's coming from, and and if, if your account is, is with us, make the payments directly to us because, um, you know, it's just best. <laughs> there is our philo.gov slash revenue. You can find everything in our website. Our website is the place where we update everything first before we make any other updates. Uh, we will like, we, we thrive to ensuring that our website is the most updated. And then fill, business that fill out gov is a great place for st when you're starting a business, it has multiple resources. Uh, it has information about tax credits and loans, grants that are opening in the city. Yesterday, the PIDC and Commerce, for example, announced a new round of uh, Boost Your Business program, uh, which is a, 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 a loan that you don't have to repay back. So whatever it is, business that feel like golf is really good for, for businesses. The break and power up the Community College of Philadelphia, so many partners that are great out there doing great stuff. So feel free to connect with anyone. Before I forget, I think I talk about this a little bit, but each check is free. Again, it's like writing a, a check out of your, your checking account or paying with your saving accounts. Uh, you will need banking and writing number. 2.5% is the credit card uh, fee of the total amount and flat fee for debit card is 3.45. And in person with car payments has a, a flat fee as well. All right. Interest on penalties, effective January 1st of 2024 or taxes except real estate tax and liquor because they have a different interest and penalties and structure. All interests are charged at the rate of 13% per year and 0.75 for the up the unpaid balance per month that will be added. Um, and these are rates set by the Federal Reserve and the federal government and we just have to follow. So like we said during enforcement, the best thing you can do is reach out, get into a payment plan if you cannot afford in full, 
uh, or paying in full by the due date to avoid having your, your balance from increasing. Again, a few reminders, bolts and doll uh, and, and like things to do. File electronically to the tax center is quick and accurate for pr processing, avoids issues, avoid delays, it avoids errors. Um, just to give you an idea, we right now have, I think it's about 40,000 pending resolutions for errors, manual errors, either someone strike out, strike through something, or we're using a, a red pen instead of a blue pen, or payments that did not have enough information to be applied. So electronically minimize by 70%. We, we crush the number. This is a third year with the tax center and using uh, the tax center to file or pay, it just minimizes and reduces significantly at manual error, manual entry error. Put at least four digits of your EIN or social security on a check or money order, or better, attach a, a voucher always. Uh, complete online registration or paper form to open an account um, and use the BERT. Actually, we don't have BERT easy anymore. So don't ignore BERT easy. <laughs> Uh, do not use red pens or pencils. Do not submit payments without a payment voucher. Do not submit photocopies. This is a very, this is a good one. We have scanners. Uh, there's a lot of data data entry that we don't do manually anymore. You know, good for technology, but that means that we were using scanners and huge machines to do it for us. And if you do photocopies, our system would not recognize it, would not read the barcode, would not read the form. And it just generates more, more work in our side and more errors. Um, so let's minimize that. So submit forms. Do not submit forms for the wrong year. Uh, we've seen it. People who take the form from 2022 just straight through 2022 and change the year thinking that's going to go through. Um, use the change form. If you're not on the, the tax center, so change form, it is a good document if you have accounts open with us. You want to update the responsibilities or the ownership. Uh, let's say you added a partner and that partner owns 50% now of your business or you're removing a partner. Uh, you move and need to or, or update the, um, the mailing address or the property address where your business is located. You need to, anything that has to do with updating, closing or, or canceling an account, use the change form. Uh, you can download the change form fill it out and send it by mail and our representative will process it for you without needing to talk to anyone. Uh, really, really prompt. Uh, and if you don't, if you are on the tax, in the tax center, you can do this without the document, without an actual physical paper. Last but not least, ensure to follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube at least. This is our kind of like business communities. Uh, LinkedIn, we try to only post whatever it is pertinent to business owners and tax professionals. So we publish blog, blog posts, for example, every every week. Every Monday, we try to have an informational blog post, less than 500 words explaining a topic, explaining how enforcement works, explaining how offering compromise work, explaining how to avoid uh, or alerting you when tax rates are coming, uh, tax rate changes are coming. So just make sure to follow us, go online, give us a follow, give us a like and enjoy the content. And thank you so much for doing this. This is kind of the end. So I wanna give another few minutes to last questions. <laughs> yeah, and while we wait for that, uh, once again, my name is Chris Hess. I'm with Community College of Phil. Philadelphia, the Power Up Your Business program. I put in the chat, if you're interested in our 12-week program, how to apply for that program. That program is totally free for businesses in the city of Philadelphia. Uh, you must be under a million dollars in revenue to be part of the program. Uh, you must be in active business for at least one year, and you must be under a million dollars. It's a 12-week program to work on a growth strategy and a tactical improvement plan for your business. Uh, we hope that you're interested in that program. Uh, we have over 420 graduates, um, many uh, graduates who have had problems uh, with revenue and taxes and things as they move along, and we try to help them with that uh, and connect them to the right people. Uh, Christian also mentioned uh, that 
Uh, business services is a great resource. We use businesses or business services all the time. You should know who your representative is in your area Ooh. of the city of Philadelphia uh, yes. and connect with them. <laughs> they can help. They can help you to connect with the revenue department and all the other departments, license and inspection um, and um, health department and all the rest. So they are a great asset. They're here to help you as business owners. You should use them every minute that you can. We understand that small businesses ha are going in many different directions as they move forward as uh, business owners. Please use a tax professional when you uh, do your taxes, who knows the city of Philadelphia, that is a very, very important resource. Um, and I uh, am very impressed with the tax center uh, that the revenue department has put together. <laughs> yeah, and it's fabulous uh, and makes life um, really easy for small business owners uh, as they move forward. I know we're getting all automated and people don't sometimes like automation, yeah. uh, but automation can be very helpful to us. Us if, if we use it in the right way. Again, I want to thank the Revenue Department. Uh, if there are any further questions, please ask them now. Um, but if there are none, I want to thank Christian. I want to thank Rochelle. Uh, I want to thank Joy. And uh, I believe Raul is also on here today from the Revenue Department for all the fine work that they do to help uh, okay. business owners and taking their time to speak to business owners Business, small business owners specifically are the lifeblood of the city of Philadelphia. 95% of the businesses in city of Philadelphia are small businesses. We want you to be happy. We want you to stay in Philadelphia and we want you to grow as business owners. Um, and um, unless there's questions or any final words, I will be sending out a copy of the recording. Uh, we will also get a copy of these slides and send them to you. Uh, and we will also, most importantly, send a survey. Uh, we would like to share with the Christian and his team also. Uh, so please uh, reply to that. I do see one new message. Let me see here. Just saying thank oh, you. Just thank, thank you. you. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Sorry, I mispronounced uh, your name. I'll just turn it over to Christian for last words. <laughs> Christian, no, any last words? Or just just thank you really for for putting this together as always um i am part of, of different strategies in the communications then and it just sometimes it's hard to reach all the philo all philadelphians and businesses so it is important for us everything that you guys at the uh, power up and and also other partners do to ensure that we get to connect with individuals like we have here today so just let's keep let's let's ensure that this community keep growing. Uh, support power up, support our our, our business in, in social media and all that, and help us reach others so that we can share the message. And thank you to my colleagues that join and and took up their time to present, Rochelle and everyone else. And have a wonderful rest of your day. If no more, oh, have a few message here. All right. Oh, thank you, thank you, everyone. No, thank you all, really. Thank you for taking time. I hope that even though it's a heavy topic, that you got to enjoy it. And again, let's ensure we connect on email or social media, anything that is, uh, if you have further questions. So thank you. Yes, and reach out to all the business health services within the city of Philadelphia. Power Up is only one piece. The Revenue Department obviously is a big piece because they're uh, connected mm -hmm. with the city, but there's a lot of help and resources out there the brick is yeah. great temple sbdc is great yeah uh, i forgot uh, temple yeah yes. so many uh, business health mm -hmm. services there's over 80 business health services in the city of philadelphia um and you probably only know two or three of them so mm -hmm. you know just reach out to us and we'll try to connect you with the right people have a great day everybody um we're not at dinner yet but eventually we'll get there have a great day and uh <laughs> thanks again everybody bye-bye now thank you have nice a good one you. all right bye-bye Rochelle thank you bye, bye. no have a good one